February 4, St. Jane of Valois, born of the royal blood of France, her selfie queen, Jane of Valois, led a life remarkable for its humiliations, even in the annals of the saints. Her father, Louis XI, who had hoped for a son to succeed him, banished Jane because her small stature and misshapen body rendered her an object of aversion to her father, who married her to his cousin Louis, Duke of Orleans, in the year 1476. Towards an indifferent and unworthy husband, her conduct was always patient and dutiful. Her prayers and tears obtained her husband's life from her brother Charles the Eighth, who had determined to put him to death for rebellion. Still nothing could win a heart which was already given to another. When her husband ascended the throne as Louis the Twelfth, his first act was to repudiate, by false representations, one who through twenty-two years of cruel neglect had been his true and loyal wife. At the final sentence of separation, the saintly queen exclaimed, God be praised who has allowed this, that I may serve him better than I have heretofore done. Retiring to Bourges, she devoted herself entirely to prayer and to works of charity. There, she undertook to realize her long-formed desire of founding the Order of the Annunciation in honor of the Mother of God. Under the guidance of Francis of Paula, the director of her childhood, St. Jane was enabled to overcome the serious obstacles which even good people raised against the foundation of her new order. In the year 1501, the rule of the Annunciation was finally approved by Alexander VI. The first postulants were a group of eleven girls from a school at Bourges, some of them whom were less than ten years old. Later, permission was given for St. Jane to be professed without doing an official novite. This she did at Pentecost in the year 1504. She died less than a year later and was canonized in the year 1950. During the lifetime of St. Jane, the Angelus was established in France. The sound of the Ave thrice each day gave her hope in her sorrow, and fostered in her the desire to honor, yet more, the Incarnation. How often might we derive grace from the same beautiful devotion, so enriched by the Church, yet neglected by so many Catholics?